<laughs> Hello, everybody. This is Pam. And I went to KFC yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. And I got um that special they have when they, you know, because they got some good things going on. They got ten dollars special um with the fixings with the sides, and so I got that. Well, what's it, the ten dollars special? No, I got the twenty one, twenty dollar one. Um, with um eight pieces and three sides and and some biscuits, whatever. But anyway, I like this bowl here, and I got the five dollar bowl. You know, they have um potato bowl. You know, got potatoes, got meat in it. This is some chicken here. Got corn, mashed potatoes, all kind of good stuff. Mm. They throw the cookie in. Mm. It's the gravy from the other mix that I got. I'm taking off my nail, breaking them too. That's another. I got a coat. I'm so used to pouring it in my glass. I almost did it like that. <laughs> I don't have a gas glass right here. Excuse me. That's what a coke will do to you. Mm. Paper steel on this. I got on a house dress. Uh huh. Been doing. Look, when I put on a house dress now, I be like, I'm finna lounge around and I ain't finna do no work, honey. Since I got up this morning, I was doing work. Babies and a baby. <laughs> ain't no baby. It's my little Carlos. Um, he's three. Um, getting him something to eat. Dad at work night, so I mean, I take over. You know why? And he goes to sleep on the day when he get home. And, um. Talking. I'm on a barbecue on the porch, so I go spin up the net in order, you know, with the lounge chair and all that kind of stuff, cleaning it up, straightening up the porch, washing glassware. I don't know, just got all sidetracked. It. <coughs> And now I got a call from emails. Oh, that's good though. Can't beat this. I like churches though. You know, when you're in mood for some, excuse me, some deep fried chicken. Uh, this is sort of fried and baked and sizzled and all that good stuff. <laughs> a good fried with a little grease in it and some jalapeno peppers. Church is just a place to go. But uh, this is good. I'm enjoying this. It's got cheese on it too. I'm going to put this gravy on it because this is all the gravy that's left from the mashed potatoes that we got with the other stuff. I bet you said, damn, why you didn't eat some of that with me? Honey, your girl was trying to enjoy that. She wasn't trying to eat it on camera. <laughs> See, that's the problem, Bill. You've been eating too much food off camera. What you say? <laughs> when you come on camera sometime, I eat. I know. 
Um, then you come on him with this little dab of do you. I'm gonna put that back up there. Yeah. Have y'all ever had one of these bowls from KFC? Mm. Mashed potatoes, corn, cheese, and chicken. I think that's all that is. Gravy. I just put gravy on it. I think I had gravy on it already. I was an out and about when I picked up this chicken. Look at this chicken cost we paying bills. And don't you know when you're paying bills, you ain't at home cooking. Mm -hmm. So I picked up something to eat and take home. And when I was out and about, I looked at my phone. And child, what did I see? Round about two, one, I don't know, something like that. I saw breaking news. Steve Bannon is out. I'm like, what? I thought he was in there for the long haul. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. That's the lot going on in that place. People coming left and right. And people going left and right around. Well, I guess they come in too, Carl. When some go out, some come in, right? Or when some come in, some go out. Mm -hmm. Have any other president changed uh, people this much or fired people this much? I know they fire people when they come in and bring in their own folks, you know. Maybe we just paying more attention to this. <clears throat> but I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think we hit no record now. I child. Always think about most time. I believe everybody says that we making history. I bet they said that my parents was young. They had to look at all the stuff that happened when she was young. When we was young. And now, things are happening now that will go down in the history books, honey. Because I just heard on the news. I ain't up on, on everything, child. They just put up a plaque in Jackson, Mississippi, at the Jackson Library of some students that went to that library. Oh, they don't get the right, y'all. And, um, uh, 
And one of the students wanted to check out a book because they was in college, you know. And um, and when they told him that, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. you can't check that book out. Mm. But if you go to the library down the street, they'll be glad to help you. And so, our students heard what was said. I think it was eight of them. I said eight of them. <laughs> I think it was eight of them. And, um, so, they sat there and started reading books, you know, quietly reading books. And then a librarian called the police. And he started getting, mm, hey, what's going on, kind of thing. But the librarian called the police, child. And then the police came. Listen to the story of what was going on. Yeah, he arrested the students for breaking the peace. Breaking the peace. What did you say, Bell? All that you said don't even make no sense. Well, did I tell you this happened in 1961? And that the librarian was white and the college students, the eight of them was black. And that was a Jim Crow law or some kind of law that black people and white people had separate stuff, you know, had a separate library. And it was against the law, excuse me, I guess it was against the law because they got arrested for breaking the peace for them to sit in that library and read. They didn't get the book. They sat there to read. Mm. Well, at the same library, oh, and the guy name was Jackson, just like the place he lived in, Jackson, Mississippi. I was going to school in, and they didn't put a plaque up with the pictures of the students, wrote them a story on it. At the Jackson Library in Mississippi. So no. Yeah, but you know I ain't up on all that stuff. I'm, I'll be honest to tell you. And I ain't teach all that when I was going to school. Some of this stuff I'm just not hearing about it for the first time. Mm-hmm. And I was born in '61. When all that happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes I think about if Dr. King was not assassinated, he would be alive today if he died of natural causes. Real old on um somebody granddaddy. Because I look at his sons, because his wife was still alive, remember? Mm-hmm. Um, I think she dead now, though. But still, that's somebody granddaddy. That ain't been that long ago. Because I think I was four years old. Is it when he died? I believe so. When I'm died in 64, I think it was either King or Kennedy. <clears throat> Y'all tell me. But everybody was in such a hurtness when I was four years old. And all I could think about was breaking news came on. I was sitting in front of the TV watching cartoons because cartoons came on every Saturday on the weekend. It, had, it was a weekend. Cartoons was on. And I was like... 
Cartoons on every channel. Cartoons ain't on. That's how I remember that. I don't know who was dead. All I knew that that news channel was on every channel all day. Old folks were walking around. They was kind of quiet. And, you know that, so you didn't know, really know what was going on because I was little, you know. And all I was concerned about at that time was that they, the cartoons went on. Oh no. The parents sheltered you from a lot of stuff. There ain't no nothing about no prejudice and no racism and hating folks for the color of their skin. None of that. I just wanted to watch cartoons. All that stuff was going on, and I was sheltered from that. My mom told me one time after we got older, grown, old, that I don't even know if she was talking to me. She probably wasn't even talking to me. Anyway, she was telling the story. I heard it though. Cause I can't remember her talking to me about it. She said that, see, I had some brothers and sisters with them hazel eyes, like Willie's. Now, Willie had another picture. We had pictures of us with us not smiling so much. We looking real serious. But look at Willie's eyes. Okay. That ain't my brother. That's my man right there. But anyway. My brother had eyes like that. So when I saw Willie, I, I thought about he got eyes like my brother and my sister. I got a couple of sisters with eyes like that. But anyway, I said, and she said that her, you know, her child was light like this, this lighter than this right here. And um, she was pushing her baby in a stroller. My oldest brother at the time. And so that means that was her second child because I had a sister older than him. And she had those same eyes. That was from her first husband. We had different dads. Anyway, they were real, real, real light. And she didn't have my sister with them. They had my brother in the stroller. And I don't know what was going on, but the people got in the uproar. And a man came over to her and snatched the cover off her baby and looked at it and said, oh, that ain't nothing but a nigga, baby. Somebody was trying to say that she had a white child or she had slept with a white man, which her husband was black. But at that time, at that time my uncles and, and folks in my family, they were so light-skinned that they looked white in my my uncles had those blue eyes. Their eyes weren't hazel. They was actually blue. So you know they had that blood in them. Anyway. I don't say she was so scared. She wasn't talking to me. She was talking to somebody and I overheard it. Child. She was telling the story. Cause that was a while back when my brother was little. And I'm thinking, like, the stuff these people went through. And then they, people wonder why those old people say, and my mama used to say them, don't let white folks in your house. In her house. She said that because the way we do things in Black houses, white folks do things different. And she didn't want them to take her children because we didn't have all the refineries that they had. You know, go looking, peeping in your cabinets, looking in the bedrooms, 
Got all them kids sleeping in one room. Or in one bed. Not room. No, no, just necessarily room. Eating goulash for dinner. Some cornbread and a pot of beans. Or a pot of greens. One day, I mean, separate days, different meals. But she had this thing about don't let them folks in the house. You'd be like, golly, why? Kids don't understand. As I got older, I start understanding why. And when, you're on, when she was on the phone, she would let us talk to people that sounded white on the phone. She didn't really talk to them on the phone. Would you tell them what, if she there or if she ain't there and stuff like that? And say, well, oh, your mama was prejudiced. Sometimes I used to think that. But maybe she was just scared. Maybe she had been through enough to know to stay out of their way. And maybe she had been through enough to know that she couldn't trust them. But you say, damn, that's kind of cruel. Well, I'm saying like this. What just happened in Charlotte, these people just not took their masses off. It was worse when she was growing up. She was having children trying to work and make a living. And then sometimes she had some Ajax and a rag and she cleaned white people houses. 